Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is April the 3rd, 2019, and what a great day we had today. I'm going to hand this right over to Miss Vegas, the one that's really in charge. <laughs> I let him think that. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. So, you know what? We had a really good day today, especially in the morning. And you know what? Mornings are usually the best time to really take profits and, you know, get refocused and move on with your day. You don't have to trade all day. You know, take the money and run, and and that's the beauty of trading. You have the flexibility to do other things with your life. Okay, so we're going to talk today about AMD, Riot, AVID, CJJD, FTech, and Apron, because I just want to talk about the news on Apron later on. So let's get started with AMD. So you guys know that we did talk about the stock yesterday. Uh, we talked about options. And, you know, I was really talking about, you know, how the stock was upgraded and that, you know, looking for the stock longer term to go like 30, 33, 34-ish. And I'm still bullish on this stock for a longer term hold, even though it ran today all the way um, from 2802 at the open. Okay. It was pre-market, was running and um, went all the way to 2994. And that is just amazing run. The nice thing is that everyone took their money from the option calls. I mean, we knew that they don't expire until Friday, and but everyone was just up on those calls, and we just said, look, guys, like, honestly, just take the money and go because, you know what, let's just find something else to trade. Like, we don't need to hold, and the next thing you know, the profits you could have taken slip right in front of you. So we took our profits, and the only option I currently have now uh, with AMD is the April 12, 3250 call. And those are going for like 13 cents. And I picked those up actually for 18 and 20. So I have those and they're kind of like a bit of a lotto play for me because they really weren't that much money. So I'm just going to hold on to them. They're for another week. Lots can change with the stock in a week. But the volume was amazing. 196.89 million. After hours, the stock's trading at 29.10. So I kind of like the fact that it's really not dropping below yesterday's close and not even going near the opening price. So I am pleased with that. And I'm going to turn it over to Jim to talk to us about the AMD chart. All right. AMD had a nice little breakout today. I'm going to pull up the chart right now. This is a yearly chart. And I just drew in these fresh trend lines. It was getting pretty cluttered up. We did have a year high of 34.14. I'm going to call that resistance right about around 33.18 with maybe a 32.57. I'm just going to draw me some trend lines in here where I think the next targets are going to be after this another breakout we're going to get. And we got another one right there around 30.78. And I mentioned that in the room today at 30.78. So we called this out under 10 bucks. A while back and almost a year ago to be exact pretty much close to a year ago back on right around um may or yeah right around april it's almost been a year since we've watched this stock miss vegas and we have called this run all the way to 30 bucks and it's pulled back so let me pull up the 20 day get a real good look at it let me pull, first pull up that i'm gonna pull up that year again sorry i'm wasting your time the moving averages are all in lined up. We do have the, the 100 below the 200 right here, which is kind of unusual. But we do have the 20 up on top, the 50, the 200, and the 100. And that 20 is sitting right there at 24.92. So keep that number in mind at 24, 25 bucks for a support level. We did have a double top, and the third time we hit it, we broke out. So now I'm going to pull up the 20 day. We've had a nice little run down here from 21. She's had a couple bounces, but not really nothing tremendously bad. It did, Fat Cats did try to pull it back a little bit. It ran into the 200 here on the 20 day one hour. And she bounced up. And now she hit a new high up here at 29.95. Miss Vegas called 30 bucks today. And we were just five cents off. So I'm going to pull up the daily three minute. See if I missed any trend lines in here. I just drew this up. I'm going to put one right in here. Yeah, I see one right there. I see a little bit of cluster right in here on the way up when we had the breakout today. So let me pull up the daily one minute. 
Looks like a good one. We ran this all the way up. I played the options twice on this trade. I can't remember exactly what when I got in and out, but the last one I made about 35 bucks on five con or maybe might have been about 40 bucks on a contract, five contracts. And I got out of it on this last run right up in here where it hit 2951. Miss Vegas called it out right about down here and that's when I got in my first one. So she did pull back to support here at 2880. And then after hours, she's sitting here at 28.10. We did close at $29. So if this thing pulls back at any, I don't see it go no lower. Let me repeat, no lower than probably $28, $28.03. But we do have a support level here at 28.80. We hit that right before close, and she bounced on up. So this can pull back a little bit. If not, it'll run up, try to break this last resistance of $29.95. And um, that's all I can really say about it. We're just very bullish on this trade. So any pullback is a healthy pullback, and it will bounce back up. And the next one we're going to talk about is run that's running with the, the blockchain right now, and that's going to be Riot. Is there anything, yeah. anything you want to say about Riot, Miss Vegas? Well, you know, Riot, uh, you know, I did. we did talk about the stock um, back actually on March 19. You know, I did say that a barbecue was coming because I felt that the stock was being shorted and that they were going to get in some serious trouble. And you know what? They got in trouble because the stock ran as high as 514 today. And at the time, the stock was 391. Um, what was interesting, though, with the, you know, Bitcoin, um, there it did go parabolic uh, uh, today on the stock. Uh, looks like um, it was just so many different things like crypto prices, apparently are correlating with Google searches on um, Bitcoin's upside swing and Google searches coincide with the bullish performance in the market. And the Bitcoin price on Coinbase surged to 22.63% to 512 in just two hours. And that was just around the time when Bitcoin search trend picked momentum. So uh, funny enough, um, you know, there's just, I guess, uh, sympathy plays are just happening out there. I mean, Riot was running mara was running um you know just so many i guess sympathy plays to bitcoin were were running and the other thing too is that you know bitcoin um the crypto market sprang back to life i mean it has surged um pretty up uh, pretty much a lot higher than what it was in nearly five months and you know why is that going on i mean this is you know is this coming as a surprise um we'll have to see you know, looking back, a big move was probably overdue. Uh, Bitcoin's average daily trading range had slipped to a two-year lows in March. And there was an extended period of low volatility, which usually can end up with a violent move on either side. So I think the volatility period ended with a strong bullish breakout. And, uh, you know, that's kind of why I think this happened. Again, I mean, I'm not a Bitcoin person. I've never even bought Bitcoin but, uh, you know, that's just kind of like what I'm thinking happened. And uh, turn it over to you, Jim, and maybe you can comment on your thoughts and on this chart. Yeah, I've been around long enough to watch this uh, this uh, lion's nest run up from when the Bitcoin crave came in. And we did have a low back during the crash of uh, December to $1.29. And this is one that we, Miss Vegas and I have been watching for a couple of years or at least for one good year, and she went ahead, it might have been a couple of years, and she's ran up, and this is all these yellow lines are from 2017, when we had this run back in here. Let me pull up the three-year chart. So this was back when we had that huge run on Bitcoin. This thing ran all the way up to 46.20. Miss Vegas called this down here at the very bottom at one time. And I took a little bit of it, but not all that huge run. I just kind of was not used to stocks running like this. So it has pulled back to a low. And then let me pull up the 20 day. And it fell right into all my path of all my old resistance lines. The 534 was the last one that I wrote on here. And we hit a 542 high. Now we've had a good five day run on this. It was down here at three bucks where it consolidated for four days. And then it had a breakout and she's ran up ever since so I should have kind of took in mind that this thing was running again put a new trend line right there and I'm gonna throw one right here 
and I'm going to throw one right down here for support levels. So I'm now going to pull up the, the three minute daily, see if I see anything that I missed. I don't. Maybe one right in here, or I should change that to right here. I'll take this one out. Yeah, that looks good. So I'm going to bring it up to a daily one minute. I'm going to call this trade out. So we got a low support right here at 458. We have the second support right here at 476. And the first support is going to be in this channel area right here between 492 and 507. We did hit a double top after hours. So if this thing pulls back again tomorrow and then it go ahead and proceeds back up here, we might have a triple top breakout at the 537 level. I'm not going to count the 542, but I am going to charge it at 536. So first support, I mean third is 458. Second one's going to be right here at 476. And then the first channel of supports can be between 492 and 507. Somewhere in that area it could pull back. And then we're going to go ahead, bounce up, hit the triple top, and then have another breakout on this stock. Let me pull this 10 day up real fast, see if I can get another trend line. Nope, I'm going to have to pull a 30 or a 20. Nope. Got to pull another one. Let's go to 90. So the next resistance level we're going to be looking for on this trade is going to be 572. Write that down on paper. When this thing starts to run, it does run. And then we'll definitely have a little pullback of consolidation. This is the fourth day that it started to take off. One, two, three, four, and tomorrow will be number five. So after that fifth day, I do expect a bigger pullback. But those are the resistance levels. You can stop this video at any time and copy and paste the chart and use it for your own prefer your own personal reference and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be avid a v i d so if you remember we also talked about avid a while back too and uh did mention that they were going to be at the nab show they're going to be there april 8 9 10 and 11 and, you know, this company is really for people that are artists. You know, you could be a creative artist a media, on the media team. Maybe you're an individual artist. Um, you know, you can check out their website. They provide, like I said, real-world experience, state-of-the-art technology for audio, video, and music. They're into people that, have a, that want to have a career, basically, you know, in digital media. Um, so I think the website's really cool. And um, they're going to be at the Aria Hotel, which I've stayed at, by the way, um, in Vegas. So um, they will be there soon. And um, if anyone's going to be in Vegas, you might want to check it out. Uh, they are also this week. They are currently in Germany. And um, they are at in Frankfurt, Germany, actually. And they are there to uh, the Global Entertainment Technology Show. And they're there to obviously um, showcase uh, the industry that they're in because they're in that in that sector. So definitely, you know, they're on tour showcasing their product and their services. And uh, I think uh, this company has a future. I mean, right now it keeps making new 52-week highs. Ran beautifully today at a 908. Good volume and made new 52-week high. It has pulled back here at about 850, but... I'm still liking what I'm seeing in terms of volume and um, shares that are being bought even after hours. Um, so, Jim, over to you on this Avid. Yeah, we've had a triple top here, and we did break out of it. Double top back here oh, last year, right here at the average of about 667. We're not going to say the 666 number. And then she consolidated up. Then here in the last month from, from 318, Today we had a high of 908, and I'm going to draw me a little trend line right there at 908 for resistance. Then I'm going to draw another one right here where the candle base of this candle stops at 850. Well, I didn't get that one up here. There we go. So now I'm going to pull this up to a 20 day. We do have the moving averages moving up, the 50 and the and the 20. I'm going to pull this up to a 20 day real fast. I don't see anything I missed. And pull it up to a daily one minute. So I do have a support level right here at 850. That's where it kind of pulled back after the great run this morning, first thing. She did pull back and consolidate. And if it pulls back any more, I'd probably see a level right down here right around 837, 830. 
and then maybe somewhere in this vicinity let's draw a chalk line right here right around 816 for a low low I'd say keep this thing on watch I'm gonna we do have like she said this is the 52 week high right here at 908 so maybe this stock's gonna start forming a channel the channel is going to form right between 816 and 906, somewhere in that vicinity. And we'll start knowing here in a couple of days how this stock is going to run. But this is one you need to keep on your watch list. And then we'll draw a little trend line right here for a resistance breakout. I mean, if it wants to run up, we've got an 875. And then another one right here. It's kind of hard to tell, but around 848 or 884. And I see another one right here. I'm going to put it at 862. It almost runs right into that 200 SMA. The only negative thing about it I see right now is that the 50 and the 20 are below the 100 and the 200 SMA. They need to get on top to show a bullish signal. As long as this runs above the 8, we're in business. So it don't matter where these are. As long as that number keeps above the 8, that's going to be used as, I mean, as the 20, that's going to be used as a support. That's the 20 SMA. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be C, J, J, D. Yeah, so you know what? Um, this company, I mean, this is a China drugstore. They've been around since 2006. They have 131 retail pharmacies. And they also, you know, they believe in also a lot of Chinese medicine. And uh, they even have um, some medical clinics where they offer urgent care treatment. Uh, you know, for, on an outpatient basis, and they do provide traditional Chinese medicine, which includes acupuncture and therapeutic massage. So um, this one here has a 52-week high, but I do want to mention, because I was looking at um, the company's information, I do notice they have an S3 filing. So if you're going to trade this stock, uh, keep a watch that they have an S3 filing here. It is a 52-week high, um, just so you know, uh, but they do have an S3 on file. And that was actually filed. Let me see the date. That was filed yesterday. So if you're looking for the stock for a 52-week high continuation, I think it'll continue. Um, just because there's an S3 doesn't mean it'll be exercised. Uh, but, I mean, you never know. It could be exercised at any time. That's why it's called a shelf a shelf filing because it's just sitting there um you know basically they can make an offering of securities so be careful if you're going to trade uh this particular stock but you might want to just day trade it um and keep it close so jim what are your thoughts on the chart for cjjd we've definitely been a powerhouse we ran all the way from 117 at the 284 we did have a consolidated channel right here right around this 192 to Oh, I'm going to say within this area right in here, right around 238. And that's right where the 50 SMA is. So we got another channel that we worked on. I see what, what I would call a pennant flag. You can see the pennant flag by this figure right here. Kind of right into there. You got a, Then you got this coming down. Kind of a sloppy pennant flag, but it is one. And really, it could be a pendant flag or it could be a sending triangle. You could draw one right, probably right in here. So, a lot of people, I would say this with this big breakout up here, stopping right there, this could be more or less is what I'm seeing is a um, ascending triangle. And we did break out from that. We did have a high of 292. So, I'm going to draw another trend line right in here for trend line of resistance and that's going to be at 284 with a support level right here at 279 and then another one right here another one right there I'm drawing these up as a sim so you're eyewitness of how I do this now I'm going to pull this up to a 20 day means we're in this new channel I'm not missing nothing, I don't think. It is kind of clustered up with these three, but we did have the breakout. And she did kind of have a little not fat finger knife here, but it bounced right back up to support level. So we're going to make this 273 your first support, 273. I think that's pretty solid support. That's where that high was there, and that's where the top of that channel is right there. So let's not see it go any lower than 273, and that's not much from here. 
we do have another trend line going up here with another pennant flag here on the third on the last three days so we could be entitled for another breakout here real soon past this 289 area and I'm going to draw a trend line right there and that's going to be your breakout point is going to be the 289 and let me pull up a three-year chart see if we got any new highs that we can break on this nope this is actually a three-year high back here 2016 so let's see where this thing I think it's gonna pull back a little bit I really do let me pull this up to the five day five minute yeah it's just kind of hard to say this is a real nice strong breakout I mean the trend lines coming up like this we're starting to squeeze into a pattern so the resistance we're going to have to break is going to be this 289 and we're going to make new highs to 292 and then move on up. If not, it's going to pull back to somewhere in this area right in here. Probably this 273 is going to be your low support. So this is one that I'm going to keep a good eye on tomorrow because this is the first time I've seen this stock in a long time. And I've just got to analyze it tomorrow and get on with it. 273 is going to be your low support. The breakout is going to be 292, and that's CJJD. And then another one we're going to talk about is going to be FTEC. Okay, F so FTEC is the one for fuel tech, and they are into pollution control, and um, they also do have industrial goods. So, you know, they provide different kinds of services. They do also parts and service. They do boiler testing. And they also do combustion testing for coal flow and airflow. So I liked this one here in particular uh, because of the fact that this was definitely making a new 52-week high. And I really liked the way that the chart was looking. And I really want to see continuation. I mean, it did also a 52-week closing high. I, the Bollinger Bands looked really nice. Looked like some nice range expansion. And it um, looks like it's ready for a nice continuation on the stock. So if you like things on a more slower pace, I think FTEC at this time looks nice and prime for a continuation for a swing trade. And, you know, it had a nice little move. I mean, after hours, uh, the stock's around 222. And uh, even earlier today, uh, the stock did open around 190. So high of day was 224. So you know what? It is holding up very nicely. And the volume is not bad, 780,000. Uh, so definitely with more volume, but still volume's good and looking for this to continue to go higher. So Jim, your thoughts on FTEC. Yeah, I'm looking at the yearly chart. Let me pull this up to a year. I noticed a couple things about it just by looking at the year. We did have a double top right here at, at the $60 level, 60.63. Or oh, that's the wrong stock. F-T-E-K. Yes, I keep getting that mixed up. Oh. Spank, spank, spank. So here we are on a year's chart. We had the 161 level right here. I'd say probably that top right here at 157 was, was, was the last one we had to break. And then she run up and she's had a real nice pattern going on ever since 3-20-2019. And that's been probably about oh less than three weeks, and here we did have that huge breakout today from 190 all the way to 219 with a high of 224. So I'm going to bring this down to a, to a 20 day one hour. Sometimes I can't help but laugh at myself. Here's 211, and then we got another support right here at 204, and I like that right there. You see how we had this little pipe up right here. Where she kind of bounced up to 202, kind of created a solid support right there. So let's draw another trend line right here on the 214 level. Now I'm going to bring it down to a five day or 10 day. I do see a pattern right here I don't want to leave out. A couple of them. Nice little resist support there and another one right here. Now I'm going to bring it up to a one day, one minute. Don't think I missed much. I put one right here. So this is how I see it. I see a support level right here at 211. We did go up after hours. You notice we're up after hours right here at 222 with a high of around 223. And it almost hit that double top area of 224. 
Actually, if I was to draw this trend line, it would be right here at the 223 level, right where that last high was, off the base of this candle wick. Then I see another little trend line right here at the 220. So pullback support on this trade is going to be at 211. I don't want it to go any lower than that. If it does, your third support is going to be down here at 204. And then she's going to retrace and bounce right back up. Try to break this double top, triple top area right around the 223. And if she breaks that, we're going to go up to new highs. Pull up the one year one more time. So that's a one year high. Let me pull up the three. So yeah, we're at a three year high on this baby. Only tomorrow will tell. But I did give you the pullback supports on it. And I'll go over them one more time. That pullback supports no lower than probably 204, 199 to 204. With your second support right here at 211. And your first support is going to be right around 214. And if she holds up here and breaks on out tomorrow, that'll be fine with me. This is going to be FTEK. F -T -E -K. And then the okay. next one next one is some good news that really excited me today. And that's going to be Blue Apron. Yeah, so you know what? Blue Apron, you know, the stock was soared today as much as 24%. Um, they did mention that uh, they have hired an, a former Etsy executive. And her name is Linda Finley Kozlowski. She will be um, the CEO and she of Apron, APRN. And she'll be replacing Brad Dickerson. And, um, you know, they what they're looking for is they want to see a significant improvement in the financial results of the company. She will actually start this new job uh, uh, next week. Uh, her job starts April the 8th. She'll be based out of New York. She'll be joining the company. Um, and uh, she'll obviously, you know, try to turn this company around. I mean, that's why they hired her. So um, we did see a, a reaction in the stock. And I want to remind everyone, like, you know, this stock debuted in an IPO back in June of 2017. We're going to talk like almost two years ago. And this was a $10 stock market debut. Can you believe this? $10 stock. Look where it is today. I mean, this is just one of the worst performing debuts of the decade. And, um, you know, at one time, Blue Apron was actually... A pioneer in the meal kit um you know area but then what happened is amazon came out and took over whole foods and then uh, they took competition also from hello fresh and it really put some pressure on customer acquisition costs and you know blue apron had about five hundred and fifty thousand customers compared with hello fresh who had about 1.8 <laughs> million so I guess we'll have to see what's going on. I mean, uh, you know, Dickerson, who is the CEO that's departing Apron, um, he helped to broker a partnership with Weight Watchers. Um, and so apparently there was they did see a bit of a higher demand for their products. But we'll see. The, what I do like about uh, the new CEO that they're hiring, uh, Linda Kozlowski here, is that she does have a really good background in e-com. And she's a very consumer-focused person. Um, she worked as uh, the chief operating officer at Etsy. She was there for three years. And before that, she also worked at Evernote Group. And she also worked for Alibaba. And when she worked at Alibaba, she was the director of global marketing and customer experience. So if she knows what it's going to take to make customers happy and turn this around. She's right for the job. So let's see what she's going to do. Uh, time will tell. Bottom line, people want to see results. Investors want to see results. Wall Street's going to want to see results. They're going to be watching. So she starts the new job in April, which will mean that by the second quarter, she'll be giving out the earnings report. And she'll be obviously talking at the conference call when that comes up at the end of Q2. So definitely look forward to Linda Kozlowski taking the helm. Congratulations to her. And let's see if uh, Linda can turn this around and, and give some investors some faith and confidence in the stock. Yep. Jim, over to you. I have kind of a little different take on Apron than Miss Vegas does on why the stock dropped so bad. For one thing, when they came out with the IPO, they decided to go ahead and restructure the company right from the get-go. And to me, that was a big mistake. That was like deceiving the investors. So I told everybody back there when this thing hit up to 11 bucks, this thing was going to go back down to around 5 and hold up around 5 And then it did. It consolidated for... For a couple months here, right around the 5504 area. 
and then she just kept on going down ever since. But I give a lot of, I mean, yes, there is competition out there, and that is true. But I give more of the defined mess, the cabacle that this company went through was the restructuring that they went through at the very beginning of the IPO. I think it shocked the investors. So we're going to be looking, we're going to pull this back. This is the three-year. I'm going to pull it back to the one-year. And then we had, I've been watching this almost, you know, weekly ever since and then when it got down here at 65 i kind of mentioned it that it could be a pretty good little buy and it did run up to about a dollar fifty to a dollar fifty eight and then it pulled back and then when i found out today you know I, I heard it pop up on the scanner and i said vegas i said what's going on here with apron and i didn't miss her mark you know i missed her market update report this morning and she went through it that she said this lady was taking over the business and by that time it was too late for me to get in this trade because it already run up to 120 but if I'd have known that, I would have definitely jumped in the first thing this morning, right off the news, because that news excited me very much. So I'm going to pull up the five-day one. Well, I'm pull up the five-day. Have a little look at the five-day five-minute. So this was the breakout today, or it happened last night. It ran all the way to 120 this morning, and then we consolidated right here, right around 116. Then it had a little pull back here at 113. And I'm looking for little places that we're going to call resistance come tomorrow. I'm definitely going to keep a good eye on this trade. Because, like I said, I'm excited now about this company. That maybe someone new can run it like it should be. And keep it balanced and, and have some kind of plan to look forward. And a lot of times, that's all it takes for a stock to start moving. And you can tell by today what it did. So, let's see if it don't pull no more probably back to a buck if it goes anywhere below a buck it's going to be a strong buy anything above a buck you're going to start counting your resistance lines we did close at 104 and after hours let's take this up to a one we do have a trend line up here at 160 a little triple top area and we did have a head and shoulders right here on top in the middle at 120 so i'm going to keep a real good eye on this stock for definitely a week or two we're going to pull up to one day one minute Support level is definitely right down here at 103. If it goes anywhere below that 103 to 101, it's going to be a strong buy at 96 cents. A very strong buy at 96, and it could retrace back up to this 105 area. You could spend about a thousand bucks and make a hundred dollars on this trade easily. Or even if it runs up to about 113 to 116, that's going to be your solid resistance. And I'm going to draw a little trend line here at 115 also. So I've got this pretty well charted up. You can stop this chart at any time, copy and paste it, use it as your own personal reference. And that's about what I got to say. I'm going to keep a real close eye on this trade for the next couple of weeks and see what, how this, you know, when she comes out and speaks at the conference and then find out more about how she's going to run this business. So this concludes the aftermarket report. And I'm going to hand this over to Vegas just in a second. But I would appreciate it if you subscribe and rung that bell for future updates. And we do have a, a chat room that you can come join us and visit us for two weeks free of charge. And if it excites you, and we do have some pretty good people in here. And Miss Vegas has been in charge of teaching us how to get into the option plays. And that helps small accounts. And I'm going to hand this right over to her. Okay. Well, you know what, everyone? Thank you so much for joining, for liking, coming by the room. Again, you know what? I am so committed to helping people with a small account, and so is Jem. And my, I'm really focused a lot on options. And you know, I still do. I do a lot of swing trade ideas. So if you have a full time job, I do share a lot of good swing ideas. Um, but I really just love helping people um, that struggle or that are having a hard time to build an account because they want to be able to trade uh, bigger things, and so they're really having some good success with the option side so don't listen to what you hear out there that you cannot grow an account you can and especially in the options world um i'm seeing that there's a lot more opportunity to grow there than let's say just trading on these sometimes penny penny plays uh, because you have to some you can use less capital so it's very helpful when you have a smaller account um you know there's opportunities everywhere but i just find that the the level of growth that I'm seeing from the traders that are with us 
um, is just amazing. I mean, they're the ones telling me how the account is growing. So, I mean, I don't always know when they're in a trade. That's the thing. We share the ideas. I don't know if they're in it. I, you know, if they're in it, they're in it. Like we don't tell people to buy. We just share what we're trading. But then the th nice thing is that once they have traded and they've done well, they share, they share that they, and, and, you know, some people sometimes have lost and they've shared that too. And we help coach people and we coach them in real time. And that's, what's really important. So if you like to be assisted in real time, please come by and visit. So have a great night. See you all tomorrow. And uh, wow, it's tomorrow. What's tomorrow, Jim? Tomorrow, Thursday? Tomorrow's Thursday the 4th. Wow, the week is flying so fast. I didn't even believe it was like power hour. <laughs> when the bell rang, I thought, oh, it's already 4 o'clock. Speaking of power hour, I got to go, go buy my Powerball ticket. Oh, yeah, definitely. You need Powerball. Yep. So you guys have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for listening. And uh, Adjama. All right. This is the Aftermarket Port Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is April 3rd, 2019, and we love stocks.